on World News Tonight. Plead not guilty. Donald Trump leaves the New York grand jury hearing after pleading not guilty for any of his 34 alleged crimes. Buried in snow. A deadly avalanche takes the lives of over seven people in the Indian Himalayas. Sudden visits. Why are the leaders of Europe suddenly so keen to visit China and build ties? Find out tonight. Tiger frolics. Two baby tigers see the light of day in the world-recognized Chester Zoo in the UK. This is Adhaderana World News Tonight. Reporting from Colombo, here is Sanuvi Mudanayaka. Good evening and you are watching World News where we bring to you up-to-date news from around the world. Tonight we start off with a story that may decide the future of American politics as it stands. Former US President Donald Trump pleaded not guilty to 34 felony counts inside a packed New York courtroom ahead of a trial that could begin as soon as January as he became the first American president to be arrested on criminal charges. After a stern glare from the waiting press, Trump spent about an hour inside the Manhattan courtroom as he voluntarily surrendered over allegations involving hush money payments that have already appended the 2024 White House rates in which he was leading in the Republican field. In a historic moment for the United States, former President Donald Trump on Tuesday pleaded not guilty to 34 felony counts of falsifying business records, becoming the first sitting or former president to ever face criminal charges. He is accused of paying two women to suppress their accounts of sexual encounters with him. The 76-year-old and front-runner for the 2024 Republican nomination showed little emotion as he waved to a crowd assembled outside a Manhattan courtroom, entered its hallways, and sat with hands folded at the defense table as he entered his plea. The indictment alleged that Trump and others violated election laws through a scheme to suppress the publication of negative information about him ahead of the 2016 U.S. election. The two women were adult film actress Stormy Daniels and former Playboy model Karen McDougal. Trump has denied having had sexual relationships with either woman. Prosecutors said some of the evidence against Trump was caught in an audio recording in September of 2016 as he and his attorney, Michael Cohen, allegedly discussed how to suppress stories about his affair. Court documents said Trump can be heard saying, So what do we got to pay for this? Cohen served more than a year in prison after pleading guilty to a federal campaign finance law violation for paying Daniels. It is 34 business records, uh, 34 false statements in business records that were concealing criminal conduct. Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg, a Democrat, spoke to reporters after Trump's arraignment. Less than two weeks before the presidential election, Michael Cohen wired $130,000 to Stormy Daniels' lawyer. That payment was to hide damaging information from the voting public. The participant scheme was illegal. Altogether, the charges carry a maximum sentence of 136 years in prison under New York law, but an actual prison sentence, if Trump were convicted, would almost certainly be far less than that. Hundreds of supporters and anti-Trump protesters, separated by barricades set up by police, rallied near the courthouse. Many shouted and held signs that read, lock him up, as well as Trump or death. I'm here to, uh, to promote Trump's new name, felony. President Trump, we love you. We support you. Thank you for everything you're doing for us. Trump, who raised a fist in the air before leaving for his arraignment, has portrayed the case as politically motivated. From his motorcade, Trump posted on social media, Wow, they're going to arrest me. Can't believe this is happening in America. Joe Tacopina, a lawyer for Trump, told reporters his team will fight the case. It's family, it's a team, and we have one mission, and we'll achieve What's that your mission. next move? Trump was fingerprinted, but no mugshot photo was taken, according to a Twitter post by a New York Times reporter. Legal experts say any trial is more than a year away. 
Now, over in our neighboring India, at least seven people were killed and dozens more injured as an avalanche hit a Himalayan mountain pass in the state of Sikkim. Several people remain missing as emergency workers carried out rescue operations. More than 350 tourists were at the scenic Nathula when an avalanche struck the area, burying about 30 under the snow. A massive avalanche ripping through the Himalayas. <laughs> And tonight, time is ticking for dozens of tourists as rescue officials in Northeast India are now racing to find dozens of people feared to be still trapped under feet of snow. The deadly avalanche swept over the popular Nathula mountain pass in Sikkim, killing at least seven people and leaving another 11 injured, with many in critical condition. Both India's President Drupadi Murmu and Prime Minister Narendra Modi tweeting their condolences for those lost and their loved ones. The Indian Army says at least 20 people have been rescued alive. Each year, thousands of people flock to Sikkim, also known as the Land of Mystic Splendor, at the foot of the third highest mountain in the world. People trek through this mountain pass to get to Tibet, but ongoing climate change has made the region unstable, with scientists saying warmer temperatures are creating wetter snow that can slide downhill more easily. In the last two years, more than 120 people have been killed as a result of avalanches in the Himalayas. Now, 350 tourists are stranded, and 80 vehicles were rescued when the snow was cleared from the road. Officials worry another 70 people could be trapped under the snow. And Sikkim's chief minister, Prem Singh Tamang, telling Ani News if there are more stranded tourists, we'll carry out the rescue operation again tomorrow. A snowy search for survivors and a reminder that the world's tallest mountains come with outsized dangers. The world of geopolitics is about to take a major turn as European leaders, including French President Emmanuel Macron and European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen, are heading to China to have talks with the Chinese President Xi Jinping. But what is the reason for these sudden visits? Well, after putting a sharp edge on China over the possibility of Beijing sending military aid to Russia for the Ukraine war, discussions on human rights and trade are on the agenda. Both French President Emmanuel Macron and European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen arrived in China on Wednesday. Their trip is part of a three-day visit to hold talks with Chinese President Xi Jinping aimed at discussing Ukraine as well as trade and human rights issues. While experts don't expect any major outcome from the talks with Xi, the two European leaders are expected to push Beijing to limit their support for Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Others believe that the trip is just part of efforts to re-engage with China, with it being Macron's first to China since 2019 and von der Leyen's first as head of the European Union's executive arm. The trip also comes as von der Leyen expressed concerns over the EU's relations with China becoming more distant in recent years. It is clear that our relations have become more distant and more difficult in the last few years. We've seen a very deliberate hardening of China's overall strategic posture for some time. And it has now been matched by a ratcheting up of increasingly assertive actions. Meanwhile, President Macron is also expected to visit the Chinese city of Guangzhou. Macron is currently traveling with a group of over 50 CEOs, including French energy giant EDF, rail transport manufacturer Alstom, and European plane maker Airbus. Experts say Paris is trying to maintain and rebalance trade relations with Beijing. So the question remains, will the two European leaders be able to pressure China into limiting their support for Russia, while also calling for better trade relations? Finland became the 31st member of the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, welcoming the newest member state, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken said after a ceremony in Brussels that both Finland and the NATO alliance were stronger and safer for it having joined while Russia has warned of retaliatory moves due to the major security concerns to the nation's borders. Finland formally joined the NATO military alliance on Tuesday. The country's foreign minister completed the accession process at NATO headquarters in Brussels. The historic policy shift brought on by Russia's invasion of Ukraine quickly drew a threat from Moscow of, quote, countermeasures. Here's the Finnish defence minister, 
Antti Kaikinen. NATO Secretary General Jen Stoltenberg welcomed Finland to its ranks, noting that Russian President Vladimir Putin had cited opposing NATO expansion as one justification for his invasion. This will make Finland safer and NATO stronger. Finland's accession roughly doubles the length of the border that NATO shares with Russia and bolsters its eastern flank as the war in Ukraine grinds on with no resolution in sight. The invasion of Ukraine in February 2022 prompted Finns to seek security under NATO's collective defence pact, which states that an attack on one member is an attack on all. On the streets of Helsinki, a cautious welcome for the news. Russia said on Monday it would strengthen its military capacity in its western and northwestern regions in response to Finland joining NATO. Its defence minister, Sergei Shoigu, also said the move raised the prospect of the conflict in Ukraine escalating further. The Ukrainian government hailed Finland's move, calling it, quote, the right choice. NATO has repeatedly stressed that it is solely a defensive alliance and does not threaten Russia. Still in Europe, the future of the Eurozone has become less fragile, according to many consumers, understanding that inflation forecasts have been seen to take a dip. This, along with the presence of falling interest rates, may help the region avert a potential recession in the future. Eurozone consumers cut their inflation expectations in February and also took a more optimistic view on growth and unemployment. That's according to a survey by the European Central Bank released on Tuesday. Eurozone inflation had started to edge down from record highs around the start of the year. Further big falls could happen over the coming months, but there are rising concerns that price growth could still get stuck above the ECB's 2% target further out. The ECB said that over the next 12 months, inflation expectations fell to 4.6% from 4.9% while three years out, they eased to 2.4% from 2.5%. With inflation still far too high, the ECB has raised rates by a combined 350 basis points since last July. The bank's chief economist has already signalled several more increases before rates peak. Although consumers still expect an economic contraction, they have become slightly more upbeat on the outlook. Growth expectations over the next 12 months rose to minus 0.9% from minus 1.2% a month earlier. However, on income growth, consumers became more pessimistic and saw their nominal income rising by 1.2% in the year ahead, down 0.1% from predictions in January. We'll be back with more world news after this short commercial break. Welcome back. Tensions on the west of the Jordan River are as intense as ever as Israeli police have clashed with dozens of Palestinians at Jerusalem's contested holy site, namely the Al-Aqsa Mosque. Police say they conducted a pre-dawn raid after what they called agitators with fireworks, sticks and stones shut themselves inside the Al-Aqsa Mosque. Over the cover of night, dozens of masked Palestinian youths barricaded themselves inside the Al-Aqsa Mosque atop the Temple Mount with fireworks, clubs and rocks, following evening prayers while locking the doors and placing barricades at the entrances. This was an apparent preparation for Jewish visits to the Mount on Wednesday, which is Passover Eve, amid a push by religious fringe groups to carry out an animal sacrifice of the holy site, forbidden by authorities. While Jews are allowed to visit the site of the ancient Jewish temples, under the status quo maintained there, they are not able to hold rituals. The Israel Defense Force, or the IDF, said in a statement that officers tried to convince those inside to leave, but were ultimately forced to enter the mosque, where they were attacked with rocks and fireworks. Police released video footage showing what appeared to be firework explosions inside the mosque and figures throwing rocks. Another police video showed riot police with shields advancing through the mosque under a barrage of firework explosions. The footage then showed a barricaded door and boxes of fireworks on the floor, as well as police escorting at least five people outside with their hands cuffed behind their backs. The Islamic holy month of Ramadan, which this year once again coincides with the Jewish festival of Passover, is known to be a period of higher tension between Israeli forces and Palestinians. 
Tens of thousands of worshippers visit Al-Aqsa, Islam's third holiest site, throughout the month, regularly leading to a spike in tensions with Israel and violence. Now on to updates on the tensions in the Far East. The UN has passed a resolution on North Korea's human rights violation, something that has been adopted for the past 20 years in a row. What's notable this year is that South Korea is returning to backing the resolution as a co-sponsor. The Human Rights Council has passed a resolution denouncing North Korea's widespread human rights violations. This year's resolution, adopted on Tuesday, was co-sponsored by South Korea for the first time in five years. The resolution contains demands for Pyongyang to respect freedom of speech and allow independent media. It also calls for the regime to reconsider a rule which blocks cultural content from outside its borders. In 2020, North Korea adopted a new law that bans people from distributing or watching media from South Korea and other countries. Violators are subject to heavy punishments, including 10 years of hard labor. The resolution also urges the North to provide relevant information on the whereabouts of foreigners detained or kidnapped in the country. This reflects Seoul's demand for clarification on the death of a South Korean fisheries official who was shot by Pyongyang's Coast Guard near the border in 2020. South Korea's foreign ministry welcomed the adoption of the resolution. It said the resolution asks the North to acknowledge crimes and rights abuses that have occurred within the country. However, North Korea rejected the resolution, calling it a document carrying political conspiracy. The Council has been adopting a resolution condemning North Korea's human rights abuses since 2003. South Korea did not co-sponsor a resolution from 2019 to 2022 under the previous administration, as it sought to avoid tensions and resume dialogue with the North. The Yoon administration, meanwhile, has taken a more proactive stance in dealing with Pyongyang's human rights issues as it co-sponsored a UN General Assembly resolution last December for the first time in four years. TikTok has been fined £12.7 million by the UK's data watchdog for failing to protect the privacy of children. It estimated TikTok allowed up to 1.4 million UK children aged under 13 to use the platform in 2020. According to an investigation by the UK's Information Commissioner's Office, the video sharing site used the data of children of this age without parental consent. Britain's data watchdog said on Tuesday, it had fined TikTok around $16 million for breaching data protection law. Regulators accused the Chinese company of using personal data of children aged under 13 without parental consent. The Information Commissioner's Office, or ICO, estimated that TikTok allowed as many as 1.4 million UK children under 13 to use its platform in 2020, even though it sets 13 as the minimum age to create an account. The ICO said the data breaches occurred between May 2018 and July 2020. It also said the app did not do enough to check for underage users and remove them. The UK Information Commissioner said children's data may have been used to track and profile them, potentially presenting them with harmful or inappropriate content. A TikTok spokesperson said the company disagreed with the ICO's decision but was pleased the fine had been reduced from the possible $34 million set out by the ICO last year. They said the company invests heavily to help keep under-13s off the platform and their 40,000-strong safety team works hard to help keep the platform safe. The fine follows moves by Western governments, including Britain, to bar usage of TikTok on official devices over security concerns. Moving on to updates on the AI development pause, Microsoft co-founder Bill Gates has called to pause the development of artificial intelligence and will not solve the challenges ahead of his first public comments since an open letter sparked a debate about the future of the technology. Bill Gates does not believe pausing the development of artificial intelligence technology would solve challenges it presents. That is what the Microsoft co-founder told Monday. It was the first time Gates had spoken on the topic publicly since an open letter drove further debate about AI. Last month, Elon Musk and more than 1,000 AI experts demanded an urgent pause in the development of systems they called more powerful than OpenAI's new GPT-4. They argued the risks and benefits to society needed to be assessed. But Gates said it would be better to focus on how best to use developments in AI. 
He also said it was hard to understand how a pause could work globally. Gates argued there were clearly huge benefits, but they needed to identify what he called tricky areas. Chat GPT can hold human-like conversation, compose songs and summarise lengthy documents. Microsoft has sought to outpace rivals through multi-billion dollar investments in ChatGPT owner OpenAI. Though Gates is currently focused full-time on the philanthropic Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, he has been a supporter of AI and described it as revolutionary as the internet or cell phones. Gates also believes AI can be used to help reduce some of the world's worst inequalities. Welcome back. For more news, let's take care on the world in a minute. Italian police have stated they had arrested four suspects in the robbery of a luxury watch from Ferrari's Formula One championship driver Charles Leclerc a year ago. Carabinieri Paris in a statement said they had found two valuable watches, the provenance of which will be investigated further while searching the house of one suspect. Credit Suisse's chairman had apologised for taking the Swiss bank to the brink of bankruptcy as he faced shareholder fury over the demise of the once proud flagship. The hasty arrangement take over by Zurich-based UBS bypassed Credit Suisse shareholders and all but wiped them out. A mother has been reunited with her baby in southern Turkey after a DNA test confirmed it was her daughter almost two months after a devastating earthquake ripped through the region. Severe storms moved through Illinois, causing extensive damage to homes, cars and power lines. Video showed tornadic winds swirling around a neighborhood in the city of Colonna, with lightning striking a power line, setting off sparks and fire. Peru's northern region were hard hit by storms and subsequent floods for the past two days, leaving streets underwater and causing houses to collapse. Footage taken over the course of the storm showed impressive thunderstorms occurring in the city of Piura. That is all from us here at World News Tonight. Join us again tomorrow as we keep you up to date with the latest from around the world. In case you miss any of the stories tonight, you can watch the whole program on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash English. We end things off tonight with a visit to Shasta Museum in Great Britain to see two tiger cubs who are in a rare occurrence were born on British soil. Thank you for watching and have a great rest of your night.